Right, so today we're going to explore how difficult is straight queuing versus aiming. So even in the professional game, we see professional players, they're missing pots all the time. And when they miss those pots, what's actually causing them to miss the shot? Is it because they didn't aim the shot correctly or is it because they didn't cue the shot nice and straight? So there's lots of complicated things to think about when we're aiming shots and when we're also trying to deliver the cue in a straight line. So in this video, we're going to explore some of those things and then we're going to look at how we can improve our own game and try and fix some of those problems. Right, so first let's explore how difficult the straight queuing is. So whenever I'm working with players on the table, I like to do four levels of straight queuing. So level one would be a straight blue to the middle, level two a straight pink to the corner, level three would be a straight green to the corner, and level four would be a straight long blue to the corner. So I'd place the white on the bolt line, play a nice long straight blue. So let's try all of these with a poor technique. So we're not trying to get the cue in as good as it could be. I'm just going to stand up off the shot, not stand properly and see if I can pop these balls. So I'm not trying to do anything with the white here and I'm just trying to go just middle ball. Let's just see if I can get that ball to go in. So we've got the blue. So let's see if we can get the pink. So similar shot. So I'm kind of down on the shot, not with my head on the shot and that one. So we didn't get the pot that time, the, the pink has gone away from the pocket, so there's obviously more distance between the, the white and the pink that time. Let's have a look at level three. So this one, I've got it almost level with the, the blue line, a little bit up. We're trying to go straight shot here, middle ball, see if we can get the pot. So we did actually get that pot that time. And then let's see if we can get the long straight blue, so level four. So we're going to go nice and straight, and then let's see if we can get this one. So same idea, middle of the white, just try and get the shot on the blue. And we can see I haven't made that pot there. So you can see the point there that when we're playing the blue shot to the middle, our margin of error is quite big in terms of the mistake we can make and the ball still go in. So if I hit slightly off centre on the blue as I'm trying to cue that straight, even if the blue is going off line slightly, it won't have time to go off line enough before it actually gets to that middle pocket. So that's why the pot will still go in. When I made that same mistake on the pink, it didn't go into the pocket because it had enough time, there was bigger distance between the pink spot on the corner for that pink to move off line and not go into the pocket. So let's play these shots with stun and see if that again makes it even more difficult to cue straight. Right, so let's do our four levels and let's try it with stun. So I'm going to try and stop the white, each one. So I've managed to get that first blue there. Let's go on to level two, see if we can stop it. So not doing the... So it did go in, but we saw it went into the side of the pocket there, just about got away with it. Now I probably won't get away with that same mistake on the, on the green over this distance. So let's see if we can get the stun. So let's do it. And there we go. We saw actually that where the green went was just to the side of the pocket. And like I said, I didn't get away with that small mistake. The white had got a long way to travel before it got to the green. And then the green's also got a bit of a way to travel before it gets to the pocket. Okay, let's try it on our level four. I might get lucky, but I doubt it. Let's try the stun. And again, same thing happened there. I hit the blue reasonably accurately there. But because of the distance that the white has got to travel all the way to get to this blue, and then the blue's got to travel a long way to get to the pocket, it's very easy, even with a small mistake, for that cue ball to go offline and for the blue to go offline. Right, so let's have a look at all the things that make that straight cueing difficult. So I think a lot of people take for granted how difficult it is to deliver the cue in a straight line because there's so many variables. So when I'm down on this shot here, let's look at the stun shot because that was the one that we found more difficult. When I get down to this shot, so I know my head cam is never completely in line and that's just because of where the, the lens on the camera is positioned, but I'm trying to go centre ball here. So I'm trying to go centre ball, I'm trying to aim on that blue where I think he's absolutely straight, so I'm going to hit it full ball to get the pot. And then I've got to bring the cue back in a straight line and get it to come forward and hit that point on the white nice and straight and then go through the white straight as well so that it pushes the white in a nice straight line. So those are all the things I'm trying to do. Now, because I'm using stun, that actually is more difficult because I've got to use more cue speed and if I make a tiny error with side spin on the white, so as my cue tip comes through, 
If there's a tiny error in terms of it hitting one side of the white or the other, it will, let's say, hit the left-hand side, it will push the white off and it will make it start travelling in that direction. And then I'll catch the blue very slightly on the right as we're looking there, and then it wouldn't go into the pocket. So that's why these shots are, are so difficult now, because you've got so many things that you've got to try and get right. So that's why we talk about with, a, with our technique and trying to get everything right. That's why we talk about standing right, getting the chest contact point, all the things I've talked about in other videos, controlling your backswing, your grip, so you get all of these things right. So let's get down to this shot properly now and let's get everything right. So I've got to now do these feathers and deliver this cue in a straight line back, play the shot and I should get the pot now that I'm down on the shot properly. So let's try the, the pink. So we're going to get down to the shot, do my feathers up, trying to hit centre ball, little stun shot. Small error there, got away with it. So the ball went into the side of the pocket that you would have seen there. So let's try the green, see if we can get this one. So down to the shot, trying to go centre ball, nice and accurate. Nice centre ball pot there. And then the blue, always the more difficult shot. But if we try and get our technique right, let's do everything right. So we're down to the shot again, trying to get everything right. We've got a good sight of it this time. Back, just about went into the side of the pocket. So you can see that time by using my normal technique, by getting down on the shot properly each time, even though on that last blue there that I'd got that small error, exactly like we talked about, the blue had gone off line slightly by the white, not contacting absolutely full ball. It was still accurate enough because I was down on the cue. I made sure I hit centre ball. There was only the tiny, tiny error there and I still managed to pop the ball. So what I really wanted to highlight here is you can't take for granted how difficult it is to deliver this cue consistently in a straight line. I think a lot of people end up thinking that, well, I've got everything about right. I'm cueing straight. I'm looking at this shot and I feel like I've delivered in a straight line but you've got lots of things that can possibly go wrong with your cue action there. You've got to try and accelerate the cue at a nice speed so you're not decelerating at the point when you hit the cue ball. You've got to hit the cue ball in the center so you're not getting any left or right hand side on. And then also you've got to make sure that you're, as you're coming through, you're still hitting that center point and going and accelerating through the white without the cue going right or left. So don't take for granted how difficult it is to get the refinement of that cue delivery going nice and nice and straight. So what I like to do is I'll set things up like this where I get comfortable with my shots so that I feel like I can play these blue shots and get them nice and comfortable. So you can repeat this until you feel like, yep, yeah, I'm quite happy that when I get down to a shot like that, I can get down now and I can play my shot and it goes into the middle of the pocket. Once I'm happy with that, like I say, you can move on to your level two shots where you're saying, right, these are my pink shots here. I can move on to feeling like, now, can I get these with a nice technique? Then you can move on to your green shots, and then you can move on to your long blue shots. So don't take for granted that cueing straight is always just a given that because you've been practicing, you're always cueing in a straight line. Even the best players, Ronnie O'Sullivan, Judd Trump, those players, they're all missing shots. And a lot of times for professionals, that will purely be an error in their cue delivery. So when they're lining up a long straight shot, they're almost certainly on the line of that shot. Very occasionally they won't be due to pressure, but a lot of times they're gonna be on the line of that shot. But over that distance, the cueing has got to be absolutely perfect. So that they deliver that cue in a straight line, hit center ball, and don't veer off left or right. Now, I just want to end this video by saying a massive thank you to everybody that supported the channel. So I love reading through the comments section of seeing the comments from people that have beaten their highest break or maybe you've got a new personal achievement for you. I do try to read as many of those comments as I possibly can and that really keeps me inspired to keep all this content coming. So I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody for all the support. So the second part of this video will be out next week when we're gonna look at the aiming side of it. So stay tuned for that. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and liking the video. That just really helps me to keep all this content coming. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one, everybody. Cheers.